Dice Tower Top 10, I'm Tom Vassell. Secrecy, what's happening? And I'm Sam Healy, hello. All right, today we are live at Dice Tower Convention 2014. <laughs> All right, uh, I need to find my list. And Okay, here we go. Okay, today we are talking about Top 10 Essentials for a Gaming Store. Now the reason that we're talking about this one is that there are many good gaming stores in the world, but I think, and I might be wrong, that they are a small percentage. Um, gaming stores have a tough time with online gaming stores that are going up against them. Uh, even though most online gaming stores like Cool Stuff and Fun Again and have their own local game stores anyway. They're just a local game store that sells to everybody. Some of us, maybe you have, maybe you have. I know I've been to one or two bad gaming stores. So maybe you're thinking about <laughs> starting your own gaming store. So we're telling you 10 things that we think a gaming store should have. Number 10, don't. <laughs> Actually, that's not terribly bad advice, but top 10 essentials, quit and get a different job. Um, but any thoughts on this subject? No, 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 that was just a joke. <laughs> So are we just going to be like, you know, ragging on the this bad is, game stores that we have? This is had, helpful for good game trying stores. To provide helpful information here. I don't know what we are what doing. Are, what are you? What? <laughs> yes. And a little mockery on the side never killed anybody. That's true. Yes. All right. That's what I'm well, talking about. As long as we're all on the same page. All right. Here we go to number ten. Number ten. A good safe location. I'm trying to take a little bit more of the uh, helpful advice route rather than the mockery and slander that these other two are going to engage in. Uh, quite frankly, uh, if you are looking for a place to start your board game store and there are bars on the windows, <laughs> you might want to try a different place. Uh, if there are uh, shady folk about. That's, you might want to find. That's not to place keep delinquents out. That's to keep the gamers in. <laughs> uh, you have to think about your clientele. If your clientele aren't going to be comfortable coming to your store, they're not going to come to your store. They're going to find a different place to do their gaming and to buy their merchandise. So, find a good, safe place. My number 10 is have a good location. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, no, I mean, really, uh, when we were in Pensacola, there was a store that we went to that was in this rundown strip. Yeah. And it was just, we went there, I felt like we had to watch for drug dealers and things. It was very seedy. There was a lot of other problems with that store, too. Yes. Uh, it was a store of smoke. I hope that's not one of your top 10. Don't nope. smoke. But we would walk in, and I would come home, and I'd have to change every time just because it was just filled with smoke. But the place was just in this really run down part of town. One of the cool stuffs is when we go to the, the, one of the cool things about going to the cool stuff, Maitland location, is when you go there, it's like this awesome store, it's brightly lit. The cool stuff location that's in uh, Hollywood is next to Publix, you know, and it's just this really good location. And these locations cost more, but I think it's really essential for a gaming store. Yeah, absolutely. Is yours a location? Um, Location, location, location. That'd be fun. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, mine feels crummy now compared to that. <laughs> My number 10 is clearly posted hours of operation and schedule of events. Let me know when your store is open. Let me know what's going on there. Some stores seem to keep that information, but they hide it like behind the counter. So put it on the door. Put it somewhere where everybody can see it. Um, I don't want to have to stand outside your store and guess whether you're open. I should know whether you're open. You've been to stores before where you couldn't tell. Along with that, <laughs> along with that if, you're, if your sign does say that you're open. Be open. Be open. Don't, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, don't just say, yeah, we're open from 8 to, eight to whenever, and then you show up at noon. Right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Okay. That being said, I think it's fine if a game store, especially if you're by yourself, if you pick a day to have off. Yeah. But some stores, they want to be open all the time, just and then they realize after a while they can't, so they just take random days off. Right. Bad idea. Yes. All right, so your number 10, not 10 is? Clearly posted hours of operation and calendar of events if you have one. Ah, it's going to be so long to type. All right. <laughs> they get longer from here on out. <laughs> this is just, this whole page is just 10. Nine. Eight. <laughs> Number nine. All right, my number nine is your store should be modern or modernized. If I go into your store and you go to the back and there's games and you, you sneeze and dust just goes <laughs> and there's games that have been sitting there forever. If no one has bought it in a few months, get rid of it. No other store does that. You don't go to the food store and buy things or the, you know, the, the bookstore. And I, I mean, maybe an old used bookstore. Mm -hmm. But you need to keep your store modern. You need to keep it. I would highly recommend investing money in a good cash register. I mean, I can't tell you how many stores I've been to where it's, I feel like we're making some sort of underground deal. The guy pulls out a piece of paper. All right. Yeah. You want to pay by credit card? No. <laughs> 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 just, the, the, just it needs to be put lighting in. It's not a hard thing to do, you know. Make make the store modern, and if th that means, I think you should have a computer for customers to browse through. And if you get upset and you're like, oh, well, they'll go look up cool stuff prices, then shut your game store down and go do something else, because they're going to do that in their iPhone anyway. So you need to have. A, I would have. Um, if I could, something running in the background. Not doesn't have to be Dice Tower, Will Wheaton, you know. Something to just show up. Fantasy Flight makes their own game commercials. Yeah, those Run those things, you know. Use this modernization that's available to you. Good, good. Um, all right, my number nine is something you've mentioned twice. Stop it. Uh, good lighting. Have good lighting in your store. I don't want to walk into your store and think I stumbled instead into a troll cave. You know, there's like pieces of like fake rock over here and you're behind the counter looking at you. <laughs> right, so, I don't want your ring, keep it. <laughs> you know, I don't want to walk in there. Give me some good lighting, I want to be able to see what you're selling. That's, that's number nine. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. My be... number nine is a comfortable atmosphere. Good lighting. <laughs> I would mention that. Uh, decent to nice chairs. Uh, it, people are going to be sitting in these chairs for two hours probably on average. You want to give them something comfortable to sit with, a clean playing area, enough space so that uh, your clientele don't feel like a bunch of sardines crammed into a can. I'm a queen-sized feline. Uh, and if... if um, and so will be most... <laughs> if I have to... So will most of your what? customers, what? so... That's an old Garfield quote, man. Come on. It's not anymore, it's not. Uh, it's never. All right. Garfield. Why, why don't you say king-sized? Why? Because Garfield says queen-sized. All right, all right. It doesn't matter. I'm fine. Queen? I don't know. Wow. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> If I have to squeeze into some place, and those places are not few and far between, uh, I'm probably not going to go there again. If you don't give me enough space to work my way around everybody else, I'm probably not going to come back. Um, now, again, that's partially on me, but it is partially on you because, quite frankly, you want my money. So, give me enough room. Give me a comfortable atmosphere to work in. All right. Cool. My number eight is uh, something that um, you mentioned sort of in passing, which is, uh, you know, games that sit there and collect dust and you're not moving them anyway. They're decreasing in value. You're not doing anything with them. So have a discount game selection. The game's sitting there. Move it. Have a section clearly labeled where you are trying to get rid of these games. And, and a real sale, not 5% off. Right, right. <laughs> but if you know you're not going to sell it at what you're asking for, then get it out of there. Make the space on the shelf for something that is selling the day you get it. Because, you know, you're eventually going to be sitting on all this stuff that isn't selling anyway and not stocking 
the ticket to rides, the carcassones, the settlers, whatever, the munchkin, whatever's selling. So move it. Discount games. If, you, if, if you're selling everything anyway, then you're doing it right. But if not, then get it out of there. Yeah. So a good game discount section. That's my number eight. All right, my number eight is well-stocked snacks. I can't tell you how many times <laughs> I walked into a store, and you have right behind you a picture. He did it again, didn't he? <laughs> anyway, uh, I see a menu of sorts right behind your counter that says you sell this, 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 and this, 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 and this. And so I ask for one of those thises, and you say, I don't have them. He disses you. But they always have Diet Dr. Pepper. Uh, it's because Diet Dr. Pepper is horrible. I'm just saying, it's always there. Diet Dr. Um, Pepper. Uh, did, you real, did you know that the, the flavor of Dr. Pepper is prunes? <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> is it really? Yes. Yeah. That's good, though. Who cares? Okay. Anyway, well-stocked <laughs> snacks. Now, I'm not talking about just all of the gut bombs that you usually find in your snack shop, like, you know, the King Size Snickers and the pound of M&Ms and... What are those things that we bought that one time that, that they had frozen those uh, those mini Reese's peanut butter? Cups, yeah, a whole bag of them. And they froze them, and they sold them by the bag. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, we are bought them. Are you trying to kill us? <laughs> yes, I am. Sure. Um, Stop selling me this delicious. Yes, food. exactly. Stop doing that. But have a variety of of stuff that's not a bunch of gut busters, because I am trying to. To, to, to work around that. And so help me help you. I'll buy the stuff that's more healthy if you have it available. And quite frankly, the trend is cycling that way. Have some more healthy snacks. Um, have some more water products it, instead of- Stores all always water. run out of water. Yeah. They never have enough yeah, water. They do. So uh, have a well-stocked snack area. All right. My number eight is demos. I really think that you should have an open, uh, some games that are open that people can look at. Uh, game publishers do a really terrible job sometimes at showing what the game looks like. Oh look, a black box. Look in the back. Text. What's in the game? You'll never know. You know? And I mean, we have the internet, but there's something about looking at a game and feeling it. And if you have your most popular games, Tickets Ride and, and Blocus, which is a very popular game that stores sell and different things, have them ready to go and know how to play them so that you can tell somebody and teach them and set it up and show them, especially something like Blocus, which you can teach in right. two minutes and sell, um, or, or set, or you know, all these games have something there for people to look at, touch, and feel. You know, that's, there's a reason grocery stores give free little free pieces of food, so you eat it, taste it, and buy it. So uh, I've been to stores where the store owner glares at you or is upset that you've even picked the game up off the shelf. <laughs> you know, are, are you gonna buy that? Well. Not now, you know? <laughs> and there should be demos because Barnes & Noble's has a great selection and people can go there and pick up the box. Your store needs to have something different and better. Yep. So, demos. Number seven. Okay, my number seven. It's a little wordy, so hang on to your hat. You'll have ah. All right, Take my number seven is a concise, clear way to tell new customers <laughs> who you are and what you offer. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't trying to be funny. Uh, <laughs> it's, I've seen it happen in front of me where someone will walk into a game store and the person who works there will like bombard this person with like being an elitist and not, le not letting them know we sell board and card games, this is who we are, this is what we offer you. And just expect people to know all the stuff. You know, you want that customer off the street. You want that person to know what you offer, to know what you do. So don't push that person out. That that could very well be your, your new repeat customer. So I think stores need to devote a little bit of time to getting that little speech down. You know, and don't make it sound elitist. Don't be that store that as soon as a new person that they're not used to seeing every Friday night walks in, looks at them like they're in the wrong place. You know, welcome that customer. Let them know what, what's available. Um, anyway, that's my little rant. Number seven. Be customer service minded. What do you say? <laughs> I'm going to type that. Uh, that was a very mild rant. Okay, anyway. 
My number eight, is, are we on eights? Sevens, is an online presence, really. Now, an online, an online store is not necessarily, although I think you should have one. I think customers should be able to go, even if it's just to buy ahead of time and come pick up at the store. You know, a game is coming out, you, they should be able to buy it, and you can set it aside for them to come pick up. That should be available on your website, and it's not hard to set these up. It's not expensive. And yes, I'm not saying you should have internet prices, but you should have something like that online. But you've got to have a Facebook page. You've got to. You said earlier about the times and the things. That should be posted. You should right, be communicating right. with people. If someone comes on and says, blah, 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 about your store, you should be able to say, well, blah, 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 in response to them. Right, right. Um, and just that online presence, because I've been to many stores, and you look at their web page, and you're like, oh. You know, and there's like, here's the picture section. So you load it up, and it shows a bunch of little Windows icons. You know, none of the pictures load, or they're horrible pictures. <laughs> if you can't take pictures, find something to make your store look inviting. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I've been to many store web pages where I look, I'm like, wow, I wish that store was in my area. Yeah. They have all kinds of cool events. It makes it look exciting. You go there, oh, look at this event's coming up. This event, this is coming up. You know, and it might not even be that big of a deal. It might be a tournament that only four people are coming to, but if it sounds exciting online, and people are online all the time. And so I think it's a necessity. A pretty good example of that is Black Diamond Games in Concord, California. They have a very good website that's online. It's not flashy, but it's very informative, and it, it does let you know about the store. So that is important. It is. I didn't even know you went. I mean, I, I think that. The store sucks, though. But the no, website. it doesn't. No! No! <laughs> Very good store. And the owner has his own blog, actually. Yeah. Online. Sucks. and. <laughs> I don't know. Who you're... I'm sure it's great. I'm kidding. And it's switched for And he talks about a lot of things we're talking about in great detail. If you want to open a store, he'll talk about the business, ins and outs, and why you should be moving inventory, mm -hmm. and stuff that's really too boring for our top 10, but is important. That used to be my, my FLGS when I lived there. Oh, really? Yep. I loved going there. Well, they just store. built a mezzanine in their store with Kickstarter. But anyway. Okay, then. Okay, uh, okay my number seven. Negative. Uh, Well-stocked product. Well-stocked product. And, and this is what I'm talking about. Do your own research. Do your own research, but at the same time, listen to your clientele. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, they know what they want to buy. <laughs> believe it or not, uh, they do have an idea already before they walk into your store. As a matter of fact, some people might be just coming to your store to look at the product that they're going to turn around and buy online. And you have to face that reality. Now, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that, with that uh, mindset, but you need to face that reality. You need to understand that there are going to be people that are just coming to look at the product in their hands before they go back home and buy it online. Um, so that presents you with an opportunity to take that sale from the online carrier, um, which to be honest, you're going to need to do that in order to stay afloat. So you need to have good product online. I'm checking my notes here. Um, a lot of people will know what is going to sell and what's not going to sell because they're the ones buying it. Now, not all the time. Um, you're going to have someone in your store though who knows nothing. Exactly. And he's going to see a game that he's excited about on Kickstarter, mm -hmm. and he's going to say, you should have 20 of these. Yeah. Don't listen to that guy. Right. Which comes back to my original point, do your own research. That way you'll be able to see, you'll be able to point those people out. Okay, this guy's just giddy about this game, uh, not necessarily knowing exactly how well it's going to sell. Um, so please, please, please be willing also to order what you don't have in the store. Yes. Last time I went to a store and I asked for a product, they said, sorry, we don't have it. And I looked at him and he turned around and walked away. He lost a sale. If he would have said, but I can order it for you, I would have said, let's do it. Because I was looking for Thunderstone Numenera. Guess what? A friend of mine gave me the game. I'm not going to buy it from you now. You lost that sale. You lost me. And that was on you, not me. You. <laughs> Turn it around. All right. Are we at the musical episode here? No. <laughs> Ramping up, man. All right. My number seven well stocked product.
Number six. My number six is you're going to have a lot of people in your store, and that's great. Game stores attract a lot of wonderful people. They attract a lot of people, and they attract some people who aren't necessarily so wonderful, but those people are going to turn out to be your biggest supporters. They're going to show up, and they're going to buy a lot of stuff. They're going to buy tons of magic or maybe every board game that you have, or they're going to be there all the time because you are their hub. But you've got to control these people. All right? It's up to you to stop the customers in your store who are chasing people away. If there's a customer in your store, for example, who when you look at him from an aerial view, no one's sitting within 10 feet, tell him, go home, take a bath, okay? <laughs> I'm serious, if there's someone in the store who's cursing up a storm all the time and just being a disruptive presence, it's up to you to tell them. I mean, I feel very awkward in the store when someone else is acting up and the owner's just sitting there doing nothing. Yeah, I and I feel like, well, here I go, I'm gonna tell these teenagers, listen, no one wants to listen to your music right They're now. They're not always teenagers. Well, that's true. And I feel weird, you know, no one wants to hear that, you know, I'm not trying to control your language per se, but we don't need to hear it all over the entire store, right. you know. Or the guy, someone's in the store and they're like, oh, this looks good, oh, it's garbage. <laughs> Shut up, they're trying to buy a game. You know, and we know that you know everything about it. You need to control these people, and there's one or two of them in every store. And they're oftentimes very well-meaning people, not the guys who are music and stuff. That's, those are Warhammer 40K players. <laughs> um, <laughs> Have I lied? And hero clicks players too. Um, but uh, but <laughs> but but no, really. But those people can chase folks away, and keeping that one person happy while they're chasing away many other folks is a really bad idea. I, I and I've seen it happen. It's even stores that I think are good in almost every other way will often let that happen. If he, they may be your friend, but you got if they're chasing people away, that's crazy, 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 crazy. Okay. Sam. Two. <laughs> Awkward silence. <laughs> All right, we're on number sixes? Yes, sir. All right, my number six. It's already kind of been mentioned already, but have a clean checkout counter. Uh, <laughs> a clean checkout counter. And I was actually, that's the exact picture I had, you know, stuff up to here, product up to here. And you just got the eyeballs and the hands over. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's when you uh, bring the game to the counter and put it on the counter, and it slides off the magic card. Exactly. Exactly. I've walked up to a counter before. I've walked up to the counter, and the guy at the cash register is sitting behind what seems to be the entire set of magic cards from the beginning, and I'm afraid to put my stuff up there, so I don't. I don't. And. It, the thing is, I'm less, I'm less apprehensive to purchase things from you if you have a clean counter that looks like you care about your store that I can put myself, I can put my stuff stuff on without having to worry about something falling off and breaking. Because if I do that, now you're going to expect me to buy what I just broke that shouldn't have been there in the first place. Mm -hmm. So have clean checkout counters that invites people to buy stuff from you. And I'm going to add to this, that includes people standing around the exactly. counter. Exactly. You're sitting don't there chatting have, up with your three friends. Oh my word. Don't have 30 minute conversations about whether or not Warhammer 40K is expensive or not. <laughs> it's expensive, you liar! <laughs> Some people might have the disposable income to <laughs> be very much into it, but it's expensive. I'm sorry, you plop 50 to 60, 70 bucks on one model. I guarantee you they're not watching this video. I don't care. <laughs> But I, it starts I, to, I feel like enough. number one, we're going to be like, and Jimmy, <laughs> I want my magic card back. <laughs> and that one time, that wasn't cool, man. <laughs> if I rant enough, <laughs> it might get back to me. Well, I thought you were going to be constructive. <laughs> I wanted to be. <laughs> so my number six, clean checkout counters, please. All right. <laughs> okay. My number six is uh, something that you guys, you I think, touched on. Very simple, space to play. Yeah. yeah. If you're able to, and this is again, I, I didn't hammer this point home too much because some stores don't have the space to play. Yeah. I get it. It's expensive. It's expensive to stay afloat with places online killing you. But if you have the room, make it available. Keep it clean. Keep it playable. So, if at all able, offer space to play. Yeah. That's my number six. I think you should go out of your way. 
because yeah. it's it's something you can offer that an online store can't. A little bit of forethought when you're picking when you're picking the place that you're going to have your store and extras and you know even if it's you know twenty by twenty even if it's small to start off with, <laughs> gotta do it because that's something that the online retailers cannot offer. Right. And a footnote: it's a place for your customers to play. Yeah. And not necessarily you. Right. You can play there, but when I'm there at the counter, yeah. by the magic cards, come over and sell me my game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very true. Uh, number five. Okay, my number five. And uh, I think I want to move to the uh, handheld over here because I want to get a little bit down. Uh <laughs> 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 for the love of all that is holy and good in this world, have a clean bathroom. If someone doesn't want to defecate in your establishment, it's too dirty. Uh, that high schooler that you just hired two days ago, <laughs> you can tell him to do it. <laughs> and he'll do it, or you can fire him. <laughs> Have clean bathrooms. If people are walking 100 yards out of your store to a McDonald's to go to the bathroom, <laughs> you need to do some cleaning. <laughs> uh, bye. <laughs> Silly string. <laughs> Cans of silly string <laughs> everywhere in the store. No. Um, I, I touched on this already uh, slightly. Make sure your staff is interested in repeat customers. <laughs> Not yes. selling me one game that I'm going to give you $80 for and you didn't take the time to think about whether I was going to like it or not. You shoved it on me. I'll never come back because you made me feel tricked into buying some game that I asked, is it like this? Oh yeah, sure, you'll love it. Is it like that? Oh pff, yeah, that too, you'll love it. And then I realized, oh, this guy was just trying to sell me that one game one time, I'm not coming back. But if you sell me 10 games over 10 months, you make out better and I'm happy with your store. So be interested in repeat customers. Done. All right. My number five is touches on a little bit what you, I was saying before earlier when you were asking that the store should have a gaming space, but you need to have something extra. You need to have something that the online stores don't have, you know, because they're going to beat you on prices and there's nothing you can do to stop that. You can't, you can't do those prices. It's not possible. So you need to offer something extra, whether it's a gaming space, whether it's a fully loaded snacks, or whether you have cool tournaments with prizes. Um, but you need to offer, go out of your way. You need to... For example, you say, I'm a board gamer. Well, great, so are we. Sell magic. Seriously. You know, s sell, if people want to buy those little chibi figures, sell them. Have all this cool stuff. Make your store a really cool place to come into. Um, and I, uh, you're not compromising. This isn't life or death, it's games. Mm -hmm. You know, make your store a place that people want to come to. Uh, maybe a loyalty program, something to get people into your store. Offer something more than just games. Loyalty program. That's what I was trying to think of. A loyalty program that's yeah. more than just writing on half an index card and yeah. the person's name and checking it. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, well, I mean, I've seen it, I think, once or twice. <laughs> it's mighty sunny, huh, Chuck? All right, <laughs> moving on. Number four. Number four, have knowledgeable staff, knowledgeable staff. Um, and we'll get to a little bit more of what Z was saying earlier with, with having repeat customers, but. I like the button here so that I can join your conversation. Okay, thank My you. number four is also knowledgeable staff. Okay. <laughs> have a, we, we, we put ours together. We put ours yeah, together. We work together. Yeah, sorry. 
Like bum 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 bum. All right. Have knowledgeable staff. Don't just hire the guy that's always there anyway. Um, as a matter of fact, don't hire the guy that's always there anyway. <laughs> yeah. uh, because more often than not, he's only interested in one thing and one thing only, the thing he's always doing in your store, um, whatever that thing might be. Uh, have knowledgeable staff, somebody that's not just interested in Magic the Gathering. Uh, I want to have a conversation with somebody um, that branches out from the coolest new card of the newest Magic set. Um, I'm not into Magic. Somebody else might be. The rest of the world might be. But if I, as a customer, walk into your store and all your uh, staff can do is tell me about Magic and Magic and Magic and Magic, uh, I'm gonna go to an online store and find my own product. Uh, it's just the way it's gonna be. So have staff in, in, your, in your store that knows more than just magic and knows their stuff. Not just the guy that hangs out and now he wants to be paid for hanging out in your store. And look, I mean, you can hire people who aren't really knowledgeable and you can't be knowledgeable with everything, including you yourself. Um, but learn. It's not hard. Yeah. Okay. I, I could apply this to every store in existence. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of going to Radio Shack and asking for a specific part. And the guy says, we don't have it. I say, I can see it right there on the shelf. You liar. Yep. You know, I'm tired. I feel like I'm smarter than these people. Yeah. And that's not even my field. Okay. You lost me when you went to Radio Shack. <laughs> Who goes to Radio Shack? There's nothing else in Homestead. Where are you going? This guy. <laughs> okay, but anyhow, so you go to the, the game store, and you don't have to be an expert on everything, but you should know about something. When I say, hey, did the new anniversary edition of Ticket to Ride come out? Well, what's Ticket to Ride? Fire him! Yeah. <laughs> Fire him! Make him learn a little bit about the product he's selling. It's not that hard. I mean, if I owned a game store, I would have to know. What's the current edition of Warhammer 40K? What, what's the armies that are hot? What edition of Magic is coming out? Why do people play My Little Pony? You know, that, know this stuff. You know, and be able to communicate with people on even a basic level. And what you said earlier when you asked if the guy didn't have it, he turned around and said no. Pretend, and, and then find out. If I say, how much does that cost? Well, we don't have that. And, you know, and there's just that. Or if you don't know, Ask someone else who might work there. There is nothing wrong with having people that specialize in a certain area. For example, have your CCG expert, have your board game expert, but your board game expert needs to be at least competent about talking about CCGs. Your CCG guy needs to be competent about talking about board games. And you know, when I worked in a Barnes & Noble, that's, uh, I worked there for about three years, not very long, but still. That's one of the things we had to do. We had to be competent in the other areas of the store. Not that we were experts, and if we didn't know the answer, we should know who the expert was so that we could go straight to that person and say, um, looking for a mystery novel by this author, do we have it? And then if they didn't know, we had to operate the system that showed what we had in stock, what we could go online and order for the, for the customer. So you, you have, you have, you have to do this. Um, because your online stores are doing that and you have to be better at it. And I mean, if someone comes in the store and says, you know, I like this game, you need to be able to say, well then, you will like this game. You need to be able to give them that thing and not, uh, it's good to be knowledgeable, but there's also things sometimes too knowledgeable. You know, someone says, oh, I like to buy Carcassonne. Well, okay. Well, that's the elit elitist thing we were talking about. <laughs> Don't be about the earlier. comic book guy like from somebody, The Simpsons. Yeah, when somebody walks in and is like, okay, what's, do you have whatever latest version of Munchkin is out? Don't, don't be that guy. Mm -hmm. It's like Munchkin. Yeah. yeah, it's over there. <laughs> you know, like, don't be that guy who's like, oh, you should be playing this, though, you loser, you know? But I mean, don't be elitist. But you have to understand people, too. Someone comes in, they say, oh, Smash Up, what is that? You say, oh, it's this cool game where you can make zombies and all these things. And then you, you should buy it. You know what? You really should buy both of these expansions, too. No, they shouldn't. <laughs> they should buy the basic game and see if they like it and stuff. Try to figure people out. When mom, grandma comes in and says, I want to buy something for Johnny, don't hand her the box with the demon on the front, like eating a kid. You know, <laughs> sellers, you know, make, try to use common sense. There's, I don't think there's a game that does that. Not yet. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> All right. No, oh, that was us. How about you? Okay, well, I don't even know what number we're on. Four. Four. Uh, <laughs> I'm always behind the ball here. 
Number four, demo copies. <laughs> what Tom said. <laughs> um, again, just be able to show what you what you do. You know, let let your customers see what you're offering. Online store can do it. Nowhere near as well, even if they show you pictures. So let your customer set it up, read the rules, play with it. You know, show them how the game works. Um, have demo copies. It goes a long way to going from I'm thinking about it to yeah, I like this. I'm going to take one home. One of the things that the cool stuff store in Hollywood does, the, you're like, I don't know about this game. They're like, well, here, let's just open it up and look at it. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you could buy that game, or if not, they stick it on their demo shelf for That's future right. demos. That's right. I remember being there distinctly one time where I was there with a friend, that exact thing happened. He was looking at Thunderstone, they cracked one open, he bought it. Mm -hmm. So make that sale. But if, you, if you're going to have demo copies, you need to know how to play the game. I, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I think it would be a backfire of sorts if you uh, said, hey, hey, how do you play the, okay, I want to look at this game, and you opened it, okay, well, how do you play it? Uh, I don't know. Right. Uh, so you might want to make sure you have demo copies of the games that you know how to play. Um, oh, and good demo games. I shouldn't go to your demo area and see I am Vlad and you know one-upmanship and you know a <laughs> bunch of good games that you can play. Take one of these. <laughs> Kill joke. All right, on to number three. Number three. All right, my number three is similar. Z said it earlier, but very clearly, you need to keep popular games in stock. Mm -hmm. You are and and multiples. It might be cool if your store has one of everything. You're like, oh, well, we have 400 different copies. People don't want 400 different copies. People are coming in to buy the newest, hottest stuff. They want X-Wing, have it. They want Netrunner, have it. Have Ticket to Ride, have, well, I don't know, this Carcassonne's as hot, but there's some version of it. Have some kids' games there. Sell some puzzles while you're at it. You know, have things that are popular. Have Monopoly. <laughs> you know, really? Yes, it's not worth buying for many gamers, but People want to buy it. They want to give you money for it. Well, we don't sell that here. Moron, all right? <laughs> sell it. Sell popular games. It's not a hard thing. That's it. OK, my number three is a friendly environment. And by that, I mean a friendly environment to the people going to your store, not for you. Um, <laughs> I realize that you own a store, and you're like 32, and that's awesome, dude. And you want to hang out with your friends there. but. Don't make me feel like I walked in and crashed your party. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't want to walk in and catch you like having lunch watching TV and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, that this, you live here. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so make it a friendly, welcoming, oh, I'm, I'm in a store. Okay, great. You know, make sure that's clear. Um, so a friendly environment to your customers. And how many stores have you walked in and you're like, oh, I'm afraid to talk? Or there's no one, I've been in stores where no one was there. You know they're in the back because you hear this rustling noise? No. And you're afraid you don't want it to come out. Or so I you leave. In, I walk in and I feel like I'm interrupting, you know? I'm, I, I feel awkward. I, I feel like I'm, I want to apologize to you for coming into your store. <laughs> Goblin. My number, my number three is uh, actually got bled into from, from our number four. Uh, the well-rounded staff, but you do need to have, uh, well, that's what, that's what it is, well-rounded staff. I said knowledgeable staff on number four, but number three, you need to have well-rounded staff, not just the guys who know everything about one aspect of the industry. Um, be more judicious in your hiring process. Uh, hire people who are interested in many aspects of the industry, not just one. Uh, hire people who don't have a problem talking to other people. Um, it's, it's so important because you are a customer service establishment. If you cannot provide customer service, then think about closing your doors because that is exactly what you are. If you don't have good customer service, people will not come back. And, and having a well-rounded staff is part of that that whole uh, shtick is customer service. So knowledgeable staff, well-rounded staff. And we live in a, a, a we live in a country where there's a lot of unemployment. Yeah. Fire them if they're a bad employee. 
you know, really, get, get someone who's good. And if they agree to work for magic cards, don't hire them. <laughs> because they're going to steal magic cards from you, because they're, they're dumb, too, and they're just working for cards. But that's not a good incentive for them. And I'm tired of going into stores where the people who work there, obviously, they're, they're there that's only to play, and they're on the side. What's so funny over here? Having images of my head of the kid showing up at home with magic cards. Mom, I got paid! <laughs> 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 All right, well, what does it not happen? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> number two. All right, my number two. Here we go, Eric. Clean bathroom. <laughs> There's typically two, one for men, one for women. Yes. I realized years ago you started to store magic cards in the women's bathroom. <laughs> clean them out of there. Keep it clean. It's okay for women to walk into your store. They should not have to go in a corner. <laughs> Give them a bathroom. They have a bathroom too. It's okay. Keep them clean. Both of them if you have two. Here we go. This is a good litmus test. If women don't want to be in your store, it's probably too dirty. Yep. It, uh, guys, let's be honest. As long as we got, oh, we got to keep it family friendly. We, it, as long as, <laughs> you know what I mean. Right? Okay. You know what I mean. I'm going to cut in here and cut ahead of Ladies, you. Ladies require more they they expect more and they should if the yes it's delicate guys should expect more be honest with child you. no i didn't say that the idea is this if a lady doesn't want to come into your store because she's afraid of what might be growing on your walls growing on your walls spring cleaning even if it's in the middle of the winter go ahead go ahead okay my number my number two friendly staff Friendly staff, and again, we've 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 conjured up the images of of the the cave troll sitting behind the register, um, uh, eating a bowl of ramen and glaring at you like this. <laughs> okay, as you walk into the store, that's not going to happen. That should never happen in your store. And if you want to be ahead, you should do everything you can not to make sure that that doesn't happen in your store. Uh, your clientele is coming in. Uh, and a friendly staff person will overcome a multitude of other shortcomings that might be going on in your store, which will give you time to fix those other shortcomings if you have a friendly staff. But if you don't have a friendly staff, those other shortcomings are glaring failures, and you will not have time to, to reel that customer in later on. So you must, must, must have friendly staff not just the guys that are always there with their friends. You've got to hire somebody else that's going to help your store. Friendly staff. All right, I'm a little sad because I wanted to do a close-up. <laughs> but you guys Go have ahead. both that. No, it's too late now. I was going to say <laughs> clean your bathroom, but... Sure, let's see. We'll all do it together. <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> One, two. Clean your, your bathroom. <laughs> farther than that. You've already mentioned, I was going to say the exact same thing if people were going to McDonald's, there's a problem. Yeah. Um, but I wonder why that is. Also, why would it be McDonald's? don't put carpet on the floor of your bathroom, just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Carpet is not the interior design choice of a bathroom. <laughs> and, and really, I mean, I, uh, this is a problem with a lot of stores, and I understand gamers do not take care of bathrooms, and that's a whole other story, is that, you know, come on guys, really? I mean, it's not a gigantic, it's, it's, it's not a very tiny hole, come on. Uh, you know, but, but, <laughs> the family, fr anyway, um, but, but I mean, you know people are going to be messing up, so you need to clean it often. Like, at, at the, you know, at McDonald's, what they make them clean it every two, three hours or whatever, and so should you, probably more. Get it done, and, you know, quickly get it done, make it a clean place, but not just the bathroom, I, I had the whole store. Yep. Because I'm tired of filthy stores. It's yeah. just ridiculous. Come on. If I, if I go in your store, and filthy, I should say filthy slash cluttered. You know, where you have to dodge around a pile and, and you knock stuff over. And then the store owner's like, why? Well, put it on the shelf. 
Yeah, you know, I'm good. tired of these boxes of unopened games that aren't on the shelves. I want to buy them. Open them. If you have cluttered, if you have a cluttered store, I, I think one of two things is going on. Number one, your staff isn't doing their job when you're not there. Number two, you're hiring too much product and you need to stop. You're wasting money buying product. If you don't have it, or you just need to find more selling space. Or you're lazy. Um, well, uh, running a business is a difficult thing to do. Um, I would be. But they're behind the counter eating ramen. I, I understand. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that as long as there's nobody in the store. But if somebody walks in, that ramen goes away. Um, and too often this doesn't happen. <laughs> yes. Wipe your mouth. Get it off. Certainly, guy. But you, you, you have to. You have to. You have to. In essence, you have to not trust your people. Um, you have to stay on top of it. That's your job. It's your business. It's your baby. It's your life savings. It's your retirement. Whatever it is, um, you've got to make sure that it's done. So in a sense, yes, Tom's right. Don't be lazy. But in the same sense, make sure your staff isn't being lazy either. Okay, I'm not done yet, though. Clean bathroom, clean Keep store. Going. Clean you. <laughs> clean you. Yes. Okay? Be, I'm, I'm the, the troll thing. It's, you know, we joke about it, but some people are very close. Yeah. And it's, I'm wondering, are they LARPing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that Schmeagol back there? <laughs> so anyhow, I, I, I don't know, we, we say this all the time, but we talk about it at so many stores. I mean, a clean, a clean inviting store makes you want to go back. A dirty store invites, makes some people want to go back, you don't want them. <laughs> all right, that's enough of the close-ups. Yes. To number one. And finally, number one. Do we have the dice? I forgot them. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Oh, we need three dice. Anyone have three dice? Somebody's got them. Oh, look, he's got a hole. That's it. Let's do. Oh, this is. This... I'll take the 20 seconds. <laughs> They're all sixes. All right, well, we can do it. You take ten. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Two, four, six, eight, ten. This is the dice tower. I got nine. What's up? <laughs> you got nine on ten. Wow. He's you lying. Got ten? I got oh, nine, man. All right. You got ten? What's up? I have seven. No, I'm going to do nine. No. No, I'm going to go one less than you guys. Then I'm doing, then I'm doing. Yeah, you're right. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. No what we're looking for. We have to ask. <laughs> here we go, roll. Oh. Cool. I don't know what it is, but I think it's dead. Boom, oh, babe. No tentacles. 25. I'm adding these? <laughs> you're 25. Are you serious? Yes. Are you counted that already? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. All right, who goes first since you cheated? You ain't cheating, you ain't trying. All right. Um, make Z go first. I'll make Z go first. All right, go okay, ahead. I'll keep it short and sweet. Well, maybe no, you won't. Because <laughs> um, we've hammered the point to death already, and I, you know we keep mentioning it. Very succinctly, a sense of professionalism. Have a sense of professionalism. <laughs> The microphone is there. Oh. I got a gravelly voice. Um, don't forget you're running a business. So treat it like a professional endeavor. That is your business. It's not a club. It's not your hangout. It's not even a hobby. And if it is, get out of it. You know, because you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Because you will be out of business in about a year. I've seen it happen many a time. Excited, game store, because you're a gamer and you are cool and want to have a game store and you're done in nine months. Mm -hmm. So have a sense of professionalism. Run your business like it's a business. That's it. That wasn't that short, but okay. <laughs> All right, my number one is, uh, you've said it before, but pleasant demeanor. And I, I cannot emphasize enough. When I go into a store, I need to be recognized. Especially... <laughs> I should rephrase that, probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But you should, 
you should, when someone comes in the door, you say, welcome to our store, blah, 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 can I help you? You know, we all just pretend we're annoyed when you go to some stores and the guy swoops in because they're, they're getting paid on a commission. But it's nice when you go to a store and they say, what are you looking for, can I help you? And then you can say, no, I'm just browsing, and then they politely leave you alone. Um, but I cannot tell you, probably one out of 10 stores I go into, I'm even acknowledged. You know, and you go to the, you know, sometimes they're in the back playing a game. And I'll go stand at the counter, and they just are still playing a game. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like, Zeta, I feel like, I feel like I'm being rude. And I'm not even sure which one's the owner. I remember distinctly walking into a game store, browsing, getting the game off the shelf, standing at the counter while the owner, who I'm assuming is the owner, and three of his friends are all sitting not six feet away from me playing Lego Star Wars mm -hmm. for the entirety of that visit. And I'm standing at the counter just sort of watching them play the video game. You want to sell me a game, maybe? Nothing. So, and you know what I mean? So Did you leave? He eventually got up and I got the game, but it's like ridiculous. Stick it's to your guns. I'm, I'm a wimp. I needed that game. <laughs> um, so, uh, don't, it shouldn't happen. And I mean, it's, and it's more than just that. I mean, it, there are some people who are people people, and there are some people who aren't. And you may not be a people person, then hire someone who is, really. And also, why did you open a store? But I, I mean, because you need that professionalism. You need to treat people politely. You need to not argue with them. If they say, for example, <laughs> specifically when you said that Warhammer 40K was expensive, and going on a 45-minute rant helps no one. It's more like a half hour. Okay, fair enough. I'm being overly harsh. Yes. Um, <laughs> or yelling or ignoring people or, you know, getting upset. Oh, I'm sorry. Please don't do that. Don't touch that. You know, the, the whole, it's my store, my club thing. That's nonsense. And if that's you, then you need to get out of the business and you need to hire people who are like that. You need to hire people who are professional, polite, and friendly. There's a reason Disney's popular. Yeah, um, staff your weaknesses. That's something that, that I was taught in, in college with, with uh, ministerial classes, being a pastor. You've got to staff your weaknesses. And, and that holds true uh, on any profession. If you know you have a weakness in a certain area, you need to find somebody who that's their strength. Um, so you've got to staff your weaknesses. All right, last one. All right, my sure. number one. And uh, we've already talked about friendly staff, but you as the game store owner need to understand that you are going to be the example for your staff of how to be friendly, how to be approachable, how to have a customer service uh, minded spirit about you. Um, you need to understand that your clients are not going to be the best people in the world. Not all of them. Some of them will be. They'll be very very pleasurable, to, very enjoyable to have in your store, but some of them will not be. But even those people, you need to make them feel like they are the best people in the world because those people will come back. Um, and you can even be an example of what it is to be right in their eyes. So uh, be, uh, I, I guess, be the one. Be the person that other people can look to as an example of how to be approachable, how to be friendly, how to be uh, outgoing, and if it isn't, you need to have a manager. If you're the owner, you need to have a manager who is the example of everything you need a customer service store manager to be. So you need to have a friendly owner manager. All right, well, that's that. That's our top 10 uh, essentials for a game store. I hope that these aren't discouraging to people, while some people actually hope are discouraged by this. It's, uh, I, so many game stores are started because people think it would be fun yeah. to open their own game store because they get to play games all the time. Right. You're not going to get to play games all the time. In fact, you're going to get to play games probably less mm -hmm. if you run a good store. Right. And that's the whole point. You, know, you want to be a focal point of the hobby. You want to provide a community. And I live in an area where it's tough. We don't have good hobby stores and that are providing a focal point of the community. We have to drive an hour to get to one. Yep. You know, I, I wish we have a, a, an okay one near our house and then we have a horrific one and neither one of those is, are good focal spots where we can say we want, our, we want to support the stores. We do. Right. Why are you, don't make it hard for us. Yeah. <clears throat> so anyhow, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. And I'm Sam Healy. And you've been watching Top 10 from Dice Tower 2014.